Hi guys, I'm Megan and I am a lot of life's COO. So um, I basically just help with all of the things in the back end of the business and um, day-to-day operations, team management, and all of the the things in the back end of a lit up life. I always tell Megan she's the wind beneath my wings. Mm-hmm. Very cheesy and also very true. Hi, Michelle. <laughs> Thank you for being here. I appreciate you. Um, okay, so we have been working together five years. Last month was the end of last month. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was May. 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 Something. Okay. So mm-hmm. five years, one month. We're killing it. Um, so yeah, we have been working together for five years now, which is crazy. Um, but, uh, thank you. Hey, she, Michelle says happy five year. Um, I know it feels like a big milestone. It's so funny. Cause I was actually telling my partner, I was like, this is like the second longest relationship I've ever been. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> like by relationship standards, this is pretty legit. This is a really good one. <laughs> yeah. I think that's, um, it's also really interesting in terms of business, right? Cause like most small businesses mm-hmm. go within the first five years. So it just feels like a big deal in general. So we're just going to share, um, some thoughts about that and just kind of some like lessons learned along the way. Um, <clears throat> I feel like, I don't know if a lot of people know this, Megan. So I feel like I kind of want to share this piece. Um, But Megan and I, when we started to work together, Megan was not even a VA. Mm. I was her first VA client. Mm. Before that, she was doing a lot of like copywriting and copy coaching. Uh, But the reason I think that's helpful to say and like here in context of what we're going to share today, and obviously guys, if you have questions, let us know for sure. But um, why I think that's helpful in context of what we're going to share today is the fact that I think people think like, oh, I just have to find the right team member versus we have to build a relationship together. Wowza. Sorry. Flat warning. Yeah, we're getting a, we're getting a tropical storm or a hurricane or TBD. I don't know. Um, so apparently that was my phone telling me that. (laughs) Um, yeah, I need to, I also, my phone is probably telling me that for good reason, because I probably should get my ass on top of figuring out what's going on with that. But like when you're in Florida, you get so like jaded with stuff like that almost. You're like, ah, uh, because it changes like every five seconds. Anyway, um, oh, it's frozen on my thing. Hmm. Okay, maybe it's just me. That's happened to me a couple of times. Anyway, back to what I was saying. I think that why that's important to know that that happened is because we have really built this relationship together over time. Megan has built up to being COO over time. Like, I think that in this space, sometimes we can get very like, oh, I just need someone like to come in who knows it all. Or like, you know, even to feel like, you know, you have to hire someone that's like so far beyond what you're ready for to be able to kind of like have the right support and stuff like that. And I just really don't find that to be true. I think one of my favorite things about our relationship together is that we have built this together over time. Um, so I think that's just really important. Like it doesn't have to be that way. I'm not like making a case for like, don't hire someone that has a, like a, a skill set or whatever. But I also think like, don't shy away from hiring someone that's brand new to it. Don't shy away from even hiring someone that like, you know, hasn't been in this space before or whatever, which we can share more about later. But I think that that has been so helpful. And I think that's why we work so well together is because it really does feel like we've built like the systems and processes together. doesn't feel like there's like push, pull or tension around that because we have done it over time. Right. Mm. Totally. And I think that like, it's, it's been really, it very much feels from both ends that we've really grown together, right? Yeah. And it really feels like an actual team effort rather than it, sometimes I feel like you can almost feel like you're in two separate lanes, just like like not necessarily working toward and building yeah. the same thing. Like it's almost like yeah. you're mm-hmm. in separate zones yeah. that like, you know, it just, it feels a little bit more disconnected, but I feel like, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I feel like the way that we've really 
grown together has been just like such a really cool experience because it really yeah. has felt like, you know, um, like a journey that we are on together. Right. Totally. And, and that doesn't mean someone has to start with you at the beginning to build right that type of relationship. But I do feel like that type of relationship is the kind that's sustainable long-term. It's basically how Megan was joking earlier that it's like her second longest, mm -hmm. uh, relationship it is like but that is what great relationships are built on is like partnership and feeling like you're doing it together and feeling like you're moving toward like common things together stuff like that so i feel like this isn't that different than that mm -hmm. and it's almost just keeping that in mind a little bit um michelle says she loves to know that about you because one of her former students is now her va and she would love to see her grow with the biz if she's up for it oh so good i love that i really really like love that a lot you know and we've had so many um team members along the way that have been like friends or even family in different ways that have been able to you know step in and grow with us but because we like believe in like pouring into that so michelle i think that's super cool that you're seeing it like that and seeing like how can you build up that relationship with her how can you build up that skill set within her that kind of thing where it doesn't have to be like someone comes like ready for that from this start. And also thank you, Mike, Michelle says we're not person. Mm -hmm. Oh, um, okay. So one of the, let's talk about some lessons. Um, so I feel like this one is, you know, not like the one anyone wants to hear, but it's also like the really important one to say is that I feel like what I have learned through doing this together for so many years is like, it's usually the like unsexy and boring thing. <laughs> that over time, like help our business run the best and get us the best result. Um, I feel like we've certainly had seasons of kind of like running at different things and trying different things and whatever. And I feel like those are okay and they're fun and there's value and room for that. But I feel like what has kept us like strong for five years is that we've like leaned into like this part of the business just needs to like almost be easy and boring. <laughs> instead of like constantly like reinventing the wheel in different areas, like I feel like we do a really good job of like letting some things be boring. What do you think about that? Totally. And I feel like, um, I feel like it's really helped us, um, refine a lot of our processes and refine mm -hmm. a lot of like, just even like get super clear on like, um, I would say even, even our values and stuff. Yep. Like, I feel like it just like by repeating some of the same things, it just solidifies so much. So I feel like the things that we are doing feel more stable and grounded and solidified rather than like, sometimes I feel like it can be super fun to kind of like do new things. Like obviously yeah. like everybody likes novel experiences and, yep. and learning new things and all of that. But I think that, you know, by having it be where we've leaned more into doing some of the same things over and over yep. and then sprinkle in the new stuff rather. And, and that kind of like helps things just feel like they, they move along really smoothly, you know, hundred percent. And like, almost not making that wrong. Like, I think it's the mm -hmm. easiest thing in the world in business to start making that wrong where it's like, oh, we haven't talked about this in a long time. Are we even doing the right thing there? And what else should we do? And da, da, da. instead of like it almost being a marker of success, if we haven't had to talk about something in a long mm -hmm. time. <laughs> right. And I feel like that's been a really valuable lesson learned. Do you guys all know that I can be a total control freak? So just like being able to like release the grip on all of it and feel like if I haven't heard about it in a long time, it's probably because it's good. It's not because like something needs more control or whatever is so helpful. And I think sometimes our space doesn't speak to those almost like boring parts. Like it speaks to like the fun and the new and the exciting and the creative and the whatever, and all of that's good. But I think just important to me that we're saying like, Hey, like a lot of the reason like this works so well because we're not always reinventing the wheel is like really helpful too. Um, another thing that I think is been a big lesson learned is like run your team how you want to run your team. I think there is so much advice in the online space of like what that should look like. Like, should you have a daily meeting with your team? Should you have a weekly meeting? Should you have a big group meeting? Should you have breakout groups? Should you have this? Should you have like all of this like noise about like what is the right way to do it 
And just like, there's no right way to run a business. I really do not think there's like one right way to run a team, but I do think like run your team, how you would run it and in alignment with your values. So like we get asked a lot about like, do you have big team meetings and stuff like that? And the answer is never (laughs) basically. (laughs) Right. Um, I love and believe in one-on-one Megan does too. She runs pretty much every one of our meetings with a single team member. (laughs) Um, And like, I think that most like people would be like, oh, but that's not how you create team culture. It's totally, it works super well for us. I can see how for someone else that might not be how they create team culture, but we have a culture in our business of really valuing one-to-one contact and that level of paying attention and being present with someone and those kind of things. And so that is how we run our team. But again, it's so easy to let all of that stuff seep in of like, oh, but we're supposed to do it this way. We're supposed to do it this way. And so I think just like a lesson learned is like, you can try all that shit, but like fundamentally, it's probably always going to come back to like, how do you like to operate anyway? Like I have a client who loves to operate in groups. She's going to run her team in a very group centric way. Totally fine. Totally cool. But like when it feels good to you, when it's aligned to you, when it's aligned to like how you operate most of the time, that's when it's going to work really well. If you're like, if you're trying to make those different just to fit what you're supposed to be doing, like if I was trying to be all like rah, rah, rah for like big team meetings when that's not all how I operate most days, like that would just be fucking weird and it wouldn't translate. Mm -hmm. I also just feel like I would be the worst at running a big team meeting. I'd be like. (laughs) Like, because it's not how I operate well. Right. You know? It's just like, not how you think, operate. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. And, and so I feel like in a lot of ways, it's the, the best way to have a really good team relationship is to operate in the way that really feels the best for you. Right. Yeah. Like if you're purposely doing something in your team and your, your communication or your operations or anything like that that you're doing just because you feel like you should, or you heard that you're supposed to, or something like that. I feel like that, like, if it doesn't feel like it's working, I feel like that's a really good place to start asking yourself, okay, well, is this how I like to operate and how, like, what really feels like it's right for me? Exactly. Totally. And I think it's also like, pay attention to you. Do you like look forward to those even? Right. Right. Like, are you like dreading team meetings or are you like looking forward to them and different things like that? Like I'm always looking forward to it when Megan and I have a call or something, you know, instead of being like, we have that meeting today with everyone. How do I do that? <laughs> like, you know, and I think that mm-hmm. that's like the same, uh, like discernment you can use in your own business. What are you looking forward to? What are you not? And so like treating team the same is really helpful because again, that's how we're doing this five years later is because we've found a way to do it, how it feels good. If we had been trying to do that, we might not even be working together now because it might not have felt good long-term and all of that kind of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Totally. Hi, Harsha. Thank you for being here. And remember, if y'all have questions or you want us to talk about something else specific, let us know. These are just kind of like, like, lessons along the way, but we're also happy to answer anything. Um, so another thing is that we've talked about this one on here before, but I really can't talk about this one enough. Like I'll just talk about this forever and ever until the end of time, which is nothing is an emergency. (laughs) Um, that is an important lesson. I think we both really learned and leaned into because there was a time in our business where I think we, we, and we being me didn't operate with that in mind where it felt like there were certain things that were an emergency. Um, and that trickles down, like there is no way for you to be in that headspace and for you to not put other people in that headspace on your team. And when the team feels like things are on fire, it's like a self-perpetuating cycle. It just gets worse and worse and worse. Um, And so I think just like continuing to come back to the lesson of like, when I don't treat anything as an emergency, that trickle down is really helpful or vice versa. When I treat team with like a lot of intention and presence, I always get that back. Um, So it's kind of like really being intentional with like watching what you're bringing to things, what you're bringing to um, the experience. Because if I'm bringing like a frantic energy and like, controlling shit and whatever, like 
there's literally no chance that everyone's bringing me like peace and ease and like simplicity back. Like it, you are the one creating it, right? Mm -hmm. And I feel like it's so interesting because I feel like even brand new team members who join the team basically immediately get that without us even necessarily needing to say nothing's an emergency, right? Like they just feel it because of the way that we've learned to show up around that, right? Totally. Now for context, because I think this can get confused, that doesn't mean we don't treat each other with like the utmost respect and make things important. That's something that's super, super important to me is like, sorry to any of my clients listening. I'm kind of kidding. But like, if I have messages in base camp, if Megan is one of them, she will always get answered first, hands down a hundred percent of the time, like no exception. Um, because I want her to know that's how much I value her time and energy. And if she needs an answer from me to like be able to do her job, like that's coming immediately um, or as immediately as, as possible. So it's not an emergency for me to answer, but it is like, a, I'm showing you my value or like my respect to you. It's almost like, think about like any relationship, like your partner or whatever. I don't feel like it's an emergency when Kenny texts me, but he's not going to be the person I ignore for five hours <laughs> either. Right. Mm. Totally. And same thing, like just how, like the way that you show up, trickles down like that value also trickles down through me and my communications with team or like anytime that somebody asks me a question or anything like I will be sure to respond to them like as quickly as I can and treat that with importance right it's not and and nothing's urgent but it is important and is prioritized right and so I think that um that's just allowed us to I think just like, um, I don't know, like just create a lot of like, um, trust and value in the relationship as well. Totally. And like what I've seen over time with some clients even too, is like, especially when you have a much bigger team and a much bigger business, like if you don't look at it that way and it feels like an emergency that people need something from you, it is so easy to start to get resentful of like the team that you have hired really quickly because it feels almost like everybody needs something. It's all an emergency. Everyone wants something kind of thing. And so I feel like it really goes both ways. Like, yes, it's a top down trickle down, but honestly, it's so helpful for me too, because I never feel like Megan's like, well, I need all these things from you or whatever. I never, ever feel that. And that's so important. Um, because when you run a bigger business, you're getting that other places. And so making sure like that dynamic isn't present in your like team exchange, whether it's going up or going down, so to speak, is like really, really important. Um, hi, Nima. Nima says, I feel like you're super high touch and put out more content than anyone else I've ever seen on my podcast and Insta lives and crazy fast base camp response times and a thousand other things. So whatever systems y'all have clearly work well, that it looks like magical. Oh, I love you, Nima. Thank you. Yeah. And I think like, I mean, I super, super appreciate that, but I really think that is because we've developed like the boring systems around this over time. Like we were talking about earlier, like when you say like podcast rock solid system that we've been using for years now, Instagram client lessons, rock solid thing that we've been using for a very long time. These lives, same thing. Like they've been built over time. And just for context or anyone listening, all of those were added in different years of my business. Podcasts we added one year, those weekly or three times a week um, client lessons on Instagram, we added a different year lives before that. And so I think that it's just helpful context to be like, we are five years in, (laughs) um, and those have come over time. And I'm not saying it has to be one thing a year, but I just want to be transparent about that because like, you know, like that, that's a whole thing (laughs) where it's like, it really, that's why it's happened because we have given it the time. Right. Mm. Totally. Well, and I think that it's like, um, so much of that is like, uh, where we never really, I think we've done a a live stream on this previously, but I can't remember when we're like, you talked about adding one thing per year and like, that's your, your speed of like how you've chosen to 
grow, <laughs> right? Like it's not necessarily like a hard and fast rule, but I do think that it is really important to, especially with your team to kind of like establish one process before yep. you add on something else, because yep. that's what starts to really like make it feel really smooth and streamlined and like, cool, we've got this on lock. Yep. Mm-hmm. What else can we add? And then that starts to feel easy. And, and then it looks easy yep. on the outside too. Right. A hundred percent. And it, the thing that's hard about it is it takes saying no to a lot of other things. And so I think that's relevant. Like Megan and I were even talking about that this morning on something, um, where I was saying like, oh, like I could do this, but it just doesn't feel like it would be a good use of like our time or bandwidth right now, even if it would probably help us like grow an X, Y, Z way. And so some of this is like leaning into like, how do we just get this process working really well instead of saying yes to the other things? And I know that seems easy for me to say right now, because like, obviously we're at a certain point in our business, but I've always thought about it like that. Honestly, like even when I wasn't making the money I wanted to make. Like I always was willing to say no to other things. So I think that's something to think about too, where it's like, just because something can help you grow, if it's at the expense of these other things, that's usually harmful for you. And it's usually harmful for team too. So another lesson. Um, Okay. So let's talk about, okay, well, I have something like really annoying to say, um, that we will share as well. And then we'll talk about what, uh, future goals and then how we've worked together for a long time. Um, but so we put biggest mistakes in here. (laughs) Um, and I text Megan and I was like, listen, help, help me create some discernment for myself here. I can't think of like really big mistakes. Is it that I'm delusional? Is it that I just have a really good mindset or is it that I have a bad memory? Like, please help me (laughs) understand what's happening here. And Megan was like, that's so funny that you just texted me that because I was actually thinking about that too. And nothing actually comes to mind for me either. And so I just want to share that, even though that feels like a really fucking annoying thing to share, but because I feel like so often in the online space, it almost feels like we have to have this like hero's journey, right? Of like, I fucked all these things up and then I did this one thing and everything changed and blah, 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 right? Like, I I don't particularly have that. I will say, if you look at my business, I think the reason I don't have a ton of these like biggest mistakes is because we have taken it slow. Like Megan said, like, when she was joking about my speed, she was serious. <laughs> like, <laughs> like the speed I roll at is not fast. Um, even though I'm kind of an impatient person, like I've trained myself to um, slow that down in a way. And so I feel like just to be transparent, there's nothing huge that comes up there, but I also feel like there's nothing really huge that comes up there. One, because I think I have a certain mindset that I look through things for. So I feel like my brain just doesn't have a lot of things characterized as mistake. So it's probably just harder to do recall around it, but also because we have really moved slower and focused on like one thing at a time. Now, have there been like certain things that have happened in terms of like, have we ever had mistakes made? Have I made mistakes? Has team has whatever? Sure. But in terms of like biggest mistakes, there's nothing truly that comes up as like, oh, I really want to share that like big lesson. And it's okay if you don't have that too. Mm. Well, and I think that it like also for me kind of normalizes mistakes a little bit. We're like, we do make mistakes. Absolutely. We have miscommunications, we have misunderstandings, but like, we don't make that into like, oh my God, this is a huge deal. Now we have to have this huge conversation and figure out like, like, it's just like, cool. What happened? Why did we have that mistake or that miscommunication? And then let's solve it and move on. Right. And so I feel like that's really helpful because it also kind of, um, like, I feel like when you kind of treat small mistakes as like, let's just address them and move on from them. Yep. I feel like that prevents bigger mistakes and bigger blowups from happening yep. in the future. You know, it's kind of, I mean, honestly, it's kind of the same in like a romantic relationship as well. When you like actually talk through things and figure them out and sort them out, it prevents it from being like a huge blow up in the future. Right. Yeah. So I think that it's kind of like a parallel situation there. 
it's so funny because um, I, I so agree. And I was actually thinking about it in terms of the romantic relationship thing. I think I've maybe said this on here before related to something different, but um, y'all know that I like had to do a lot of work after my divorce. And then uh, when getting in a relationship with Kenny and everything. And I remember one time we were having a disagreement about something and he basically was like, you know, it would make this so much fucking easier if you could just like assume I'm always on your team. Like, even if I'm getting it wrong, I'm trying to be on your team. Like, even if I'm not whatever, like I'm trying to um, have your back or whatever. And, and I was like, oh, wow, that would be easier. Interesting. But what I noticed is that I really do have that lens with you guys and with our team. Like, I always assume that you were trying to get it right. I always assume that someone meant really well. I always assume someone like had my back. And then like, I think you give me that grace too. Like if I ever miss something or miscommunicate something, you always assume like, I wasn't trying to like trap you or do something annoying or whatever. Like you always assume best intent. Mm -hmm. So I feel like that's one of the ways we've been able to maintain this for a really long time is because we really do both assume best intent and assume that we're like playing for the same team. Um, and I think that that is like a hard thing to do sometimes where you almost, I think sometimes can approach team, whether you mean to or not, almost from like a prove it to me place versus like you have the benefit of the doubt until proven otherwise. Um, and I know that's kind of like a hard and vulnerable approach almost to be like, I'm going to assume they have like my best interests at heart until they don't, but kind of you need to it's just like dating right it's like if you're starting to date someone and you're like you're probably a cheater <laughs> that's gonna be hard <laughs> if you know so I think it is like a little bit of a vulnerability thing to be able to go in and be like I'm just gonna assume you have my best interests at heart um but I do think that that's a really big part of it too and where it can feel good both ways yeah and I think that like both of us have absolutely adopted that mindset around it right? Like you said, we're like, I'm always assuming the best from you. You're always assuming the best from me. Likewise with every other member on the team, whether yeah. they've been with us for years or they're brand new, it, it just operates the same. Totally. And by the way, guys, when we're talking about biggest mistakes, we're looking at it through the lens of like team and us and yeah. our relationship. We're not talking about like, we've never made a business mistake. Right. <laughs> we're talking yeah. about like, there's no like, yes. bit, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I just wanted to make sure I made that clear because I don't think I did. I'm not like, well, you know, it's been six years and like, perfect. <laughs> um, but in terms of our relationship, I do think, yeah, there's just no big blow up or mistake or big misstep, I think. Um, or I think, we could just both have really bad memories. I mean, that's, yeah, that's a fair point. But I do think it is that mindset a little bit too, yeah. like where it's like, I mean, yeah, like I, I've just always felt like you're on my team, like, in, like literally like have my back. And so like nothing has ever felt that big. Um, even when it's been bigger things, it never felt big. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So another um, lesson I feel like is obvious here, but we'll say it, which is, and I actually really just want to like get permission around this. Cause I feel like it's almost like not, again, not talked about that much, but like really focusing on making our relationship the priority. Mm -hmm. I feel like, um, I, I'm just going to say that this thing, and I feel like this is a very broad sweeping statement. I do not mean anyone specific. If this is not you good for you. But I do feel like there's almost this like step thing happening in our space where there's almost a little bit of like, like, I think service providers go in feeling like they need to like have their guard up and have all these boundaries and have all this stuff going on. And I get that for specific reasons. Like, I think, you know, you can always have really bad experiences that make you want to do that. But then I think business owners almost like go in trying to like, get them to not have those. And so you just automatically are in this like tension with team. And I just see that happening more and more. We're like, more service providers have had bad experiences. And so they're coming in with like full boundaries on everything imaginable where it almost feels like I'm having to like, I don't know, like get you bought in or like fight you to like want mm -hmm. to, to, you know, really be super present in the business. 
and then vice versa. Like it feels like the business owner then is like having to push for that. And I think it can just feel like this way too often. And so, um, I think it prioritizing your relationship doesn't mean you can't have really great boundaries, but it means those boundaries are like inclusive of thinking about like the person you're in relationship with. So it's like, um, Megan and I both sometimes do and sometimes don't work on weekends. So we have boundaries there, but they're very like inclusive of like the other person. Like I'm not like, I will never, ever, ever answer a message on the weekend. And Megan's not like, well, I always need you to answer a message on the weekend. We try to like include each other in thinking about that there. And so again, this isn't like maybe your boundary is weekends and that's your time with your family. And that's cool. That's just an example for us. But my point in saying that is if you prioritize the relationship first, it won't feel like this. And it will feel like you can have safe boundaries and do it in a way that actually serves like that common goal or that ultimate um, outcome you're working toward. And I think that is so important because there is just too much of this like tension that gets created when we're not prioritizing the relationship when we're not like, Hey, let me just like know you as a human, know what you like, know what your quirks are, know what your working hours even are. Like, I mean, it sounds so silly, but it like, right. It's such a thing. I'm so curious that you think about that again. Yeah. And well, and I think that it's almost like, so I have been told by all of my clients, I think that I have really good boundaries. Mm -hmm. I personally well, I mean, I think I do, but I'm, <laughs> but like on oh, accident, like, I mean, I do, but, <laughs> but I think a lot of it is because of the relationships that I have with my clients, right? Like I, like Lacey said, like I will be upfront. Like I sometimes work weekends, sometimes don't. I try not to like, uh, like I just started taking Fridays off. So like I tell my clients that, but then I also make sure like that it's, it's not for me, like a hard boundary where I'm like, oh, do not bother me. And if you bother me, that's like an offense on me and my, like, you're not respecting me. Right. It's like, cool. You can bother me and I can choose to not respond or I can choose to respond, but that's that I, it's okay either way, because we've established that relationship and really prioritize the relationship. Does that make well, sense? I think you make me feel like, yeah, like Fridays aren't at my expense or something. It's like, you make sure like I'm taken care of in the way that it, it needs to be. And so of course, then the exchange of that is then I want to make sure like you feel like you have that time. And that's like how I think it right. works where it doesn't feel like well, I'm off on Friday. So like, it's your problem. It feels like, Hey, we've taken care of things in this way. And so I'm off on Fridays. Are we good? That's what I think is the thing where like, what you're saying is that sometimes it gets very like, again, almost like tension producing where it's like, I want to be off. You want me to not be off. Like that's not a, <laughs> a thing, but if it's like, we're both like really prioritizing each other, we're having conversations around that. Like we had the whole conversation around Friday together. So it feels like it's such a different experience. Just like if your partner was like going out of town or something, it's different if they're just like, Hey, I'm leaving on Friday. Bye. Or if they're like, Hey, my friends are doing this trip and here's what it looks like. And I would love to go. And here's the stuff around that. Like, it's just so different. So, um, I think that that's what it is. And it's almost like, again, are you kind of are, as a business owner, are you building the relationship with your team enough that they feel comfortable having that conversation with you? And are you respecting their boundaries enough when they set them that they don't feel like they need to set 552 of them? And it really does go both ways, right? Totally. Yeah. Do we have questions? <laughs> yes. Deepa says that can be so tricky the Fridays off. And I love the way that you both got it worked out. We even have like, just to be specific here, we even have like Megan's going um, away this week for um, a vacation. And we even have almost like a, sorry, 
I call it a hierarchy of communication. A hierarchy of communication. (laughs) Perfectly said. The word hierarchy was in my brain, but nothing came after that. So thank you. (laughs) Um, Where it's like, I know, like, if I have something that I just want to tell her and like that I want to get out of my brain in the moment, but is completely non-urgent, here's where I'm going to put it. If she was off on a Friday and something absolutely urgent happened, like I know I have permission to text her, but I don't abuse that permission ever. Um, so again, I think it is that two-way street of feeling like really into that mutual respect where I never feel like on Fridays, the world could burn down in my business and I couldn't (laughs) get a hold of Megan. (laughs) But she also doesn't feel like, well, I tell people I'm off on Fridays, but I'm never given that space. Like it, it, so you're totally right. Deepa is kind of like a, a fine line, but I really do feel like it's so possible to establish that when you build that relationship over time, when it's just some like someone that's like a contractor that you hired in your business that you like don't even know their kid's name or something like that, it's going to be much harder to feel that synergy around time off and things like that. But what I think happens is that either service providers come in and they just come in with like that, like, well, I'm off and this is that, and this is that without pre-establishing that relationship and that trust. Or I think business owners come in with the like, and I need you for this. And I need to be able to text you for this and again, without pre-establishing that relationship and trust. And that's where it gets so difficult. So that's why like our lesson learned in our philosophy, there is like double down on the relationship because that's when all of these things get easier. A hundred percent. And like, again, just giving context to this, this is like five years in, right? Like we've been working together for five years. And so I feel like these like, a lot of those boundaries and a lot of the, the, um, you know, conversations that we have around them have really been able to be easier over time because of building that relationship and making sure that we prioritize that. Mm -hmm. There's safety and trust that's like pre-established. Absolutely. Yeah. So it's easier to have that. Um, and the way we do that is by having frequent conversations, by having conversations that are outside of even business sometimes, by trying to even see each other in person when we've been able to, things like that. So that's just something, um, I'm not saying you have to have a team member that you want to like spend all this time with per se, but I am saying like, make the time to cultivate that stuff. And this is where it pays off. Like literally like the I cannot tell you like how much value Megan brings to my business every single day. And I'm so thankful for the, the Lacey that like had the (laughs) foresight to be like, we should like really like build this relationship and shit like that, because it is just paying off so exponentially now. It is so hard to see that when you're in it and you're like, oh my God, like, why am I paying to have a chit chat with my OBM or something (laughs) like that? Right. I get it. But I promise you, like, those are the kind of investments that pay off so much over time. Like, I could not even put into words how much it has paid off for me. So I think just, like, if you're in that season where you're, like, does it make sense for me to be, like, whatever, like, carrying this much and pouring this much in and, like, what if they leave and all of that stuff that can come up with contractors, I just really think it's worth it. And, like, even if they leave, they're going to leave you, like, if Megan left tomorrow, I have, I mean, don't ever, obviously, but, like, I have no doubt that she would make the most epic transition plan and do the hiring and do all like, you know, like it would still be all have been worth it. I would never be like, Oh, bummer. Too bad. I poured into her ever, you know, totally. But, like, and also I, and I, yeah. but also <laughs> except for on Thursday when I go on vacation, <laughs> but that's yeah, 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 yeah. Then. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I just think that, um, even if it is a short-term like relationship, like I just think that so much we need to always just remember like how much human element there is in business and like bringing that even in like small conversations and small interactions. I just think that that can be so valuable. Just even like you said, like knowing your team members' kids' names and knowing their husband's name, like things like that, like just, I mean, are, are small, but like really do matter and really do um, build up that, that trust and safety within the relationship. hundred percent. Um, okay, cool. So another thing that we said we were going to talk about was, oh, I have one other thing there, but okay. 
I'll say it super fast. So one other thing about making it possible to work together long-term that I really do feel like is helpful to hear is not being disconnected, but staying in our own lanes. Mm. Um, I don't know if I've said this, but I'm, I'm sure I've meant to, but like, I'm not even in our team project management system. Like I, I literally do not have a login. <laughs> um, <laughs> And I can't imagine how difficult it would be for me to get Megan to give me one. I mean, I wouldn't. No, yeah. I'd probably make you like a fake account or something. <laughs> like, I, right. It's just not happening. Um, because we really work on staying in our lanes. And because my um, tendency is to be more of a control freak, it would be too easy for me to get in there and then fully step out of my lane and be like, well, what about this project that looks like it's overdue and da 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 And like, I would just be totally fucking in Megan's way and vice versa. Like Megan really like, trust me to like, oh, hmm. so sorry, we're having trouble playing. What does that say? Sorry, we're having trouble playing this video. Weird. Hmm. Okay. Well, whatever. Hopefully it's fine. Hopefully um, the recording will be fine. Yeah. Um, Megan really trusts me to like have the vision whenever, like she's never like second guessing that or being like, even like, I feel like I've been so committed to one-on-one. -on -one. She has always been in full support of that. She's never been like, well, I think you should push yourself and do it in this way or any of those things. Okay, good. Deepa says we're fine. Freaking Facebook. Um, and that has really helped. Like we really both know where we shine. And I think sometimes when you try to get so much in the other person's thing, it's because you think you're helping but it can be so hard. Like that's something I feel like I work with my clients on a lot where they're like trying to get so deep in the nitty gritty of like, well, and then I'll give them this to do that does this, 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 and the, and I'm like, what, like, what if they just felt empowered to do that? Right. What if they just felt empowered to run with that kind of thing? Like that would be so great for both of you. And so I think just like remembering, um, to have clear lanes and then also force yourself to stay in it. Because if I was in Megan's lane all the time, she would have such a reason to get in mine and vice versa. And like, I think why we work so well together is because it's not that they're disconnected, but it does feel like, like, I feel like we could both go through a week and not talk and easily like keep our lanes mm -hmm. running or like, you know what I mean? Where like, that is where like the nothing is an emergency kind of can come in too. So that's something I would just like impart upon you. Like make sure you're staying in your lane and like watch that in your own business. Like, are you constantly jumping in <laughs> your teams? And then like, they're going to feel more frustrated because of that. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> Diva says my team would love it if I just got off the damn project management system. I'm telling you it, it feels hard. And I totally know because again, control freak, it is like the best thing. I've ever done in my business probably. Um, and you'll probably have a week of withdrawals and then you'll be okay. <laughs> just, be, just speaking from experience. <laughs> <laughs> Megan is <a> big fan. <laughs> and I think it just like alleviates a lot of the, the stress on you too, because then you're not like seeing an overdue task. Like, Hey, what happened here? Why is this overdue? And like that team member and I might've had a conversation previously, like, Oh, it's cool. Don't worry about it. Right. But like, there's just not even that temptation to like look and follow up and like, you know, just get into the nitty gritty. Yeah. And what we really care about at a lot of life is like, we care about the outcome, not the process so much. So it's like, if like, we don't want to get so obsessed with the process of like, yeah, but then if it got moved, shouldn't we have changed the task in Asana to do like, we don't want to get so obsessed with all the like minute details that we forget what, what moves us to the outcome. Right. Mm. Um, okay. So future goals. Mm. I feel like this one's a little bit of a, um, a cheesy one, kind of like the, we don't really have mistakes one. Um, but like, I feel like our future goal right now is like really to continue to be like very content. Like, I feel like we're always open to new ideas and new things. Um, certainly. And we've had, like, I think I've always said this, like I've had like a handful of good ideas in business. And so I'm always open to one of those, um, coming my way, but like, I really think I'm in a season and Megan, I think, you know, 
naturally is with me there too. But like, we're definitely going to have our best year. We're probably going to cross a million dollars. Like all of that is amazing. And if we didn't, I would still feel so fulfilled and content um, in the business. And like a lot of that is like in many ways, like out of our control because we run a percentage model. So like, fuck, I don't know. Do you know what I mean? Like that does everyone launch about as much as they launched the first six months of the year. Like, right. You know, I certainly am not going to control that in my clients' businesses. So, you know, like we're, we're more than on track for that, but like, who the fuck knows? Um, but what I want to really keep leaning into and have being our focus is that we're always open to new ideas and we're always really content, um, with where we're at. And I feel like people almost make both of those not be able to live together. If you're content, you're stagnant. If you have big goals, you shouldn't feel content right now. Um, and that is like not it for us at all. So like, there is no like big future plan or goal to be perfectly honest. That's just, I'm not, that's not my personality. That's not Megan's personality either. Um, but there is a, we should feel fulfilled and content in this. And if we don't, we need to pay attention to things. We should be open to new ideas. And if we're saying no to everything, that's a problem. So that's sort of where we're at a kind of boring, but true. <laughs> what do you think? About that? Mm. Totally. And, and I would say that like, it's almost like, I feel like there are always going to be small new things. There's always room for improvement on different things. And really just like, I feel like so much in the business right now feels so good. That it's really almost like just leaning more into those things, like leaning even mm-hmm. more into what's working, leaning even more into what feels good, because that's just going to necessarily even like, like probably grow the business, but also just make it so that even if you're like, even if the business doesn't reach a million this year, that it still is like totally fine. We're all really happy along the way, you know? Yeah. And that's like, I think looking back on the five years, that's like the biggest takeaway is like, if you enjoy the process, it's so sustainable. Like if I look back and think about, I do this often, actually, I think about so many of the people that were like starting around the time I was starting And like how so few I see still in business or still like, um, you know, having success over time and whatever, um, like everyone has their own reasons, no judgment on that. But I think so much of like why we've been able to be in this space for so long and grow year over year and all of that is because we enjoy the process of running this business together is because we're not sacrificing a lot of things for the sake of hitting a certain goal or something like that. And so, yeah, even like Megan was saying, like, even if we don't hit it a million this year, fuck, even if we don't hit it next year, like, I know I'm going to stay in business. I know Megan's going to stay on my team because we're really enjoying what it feels like to run the business and to run the team right now. And if you have that, like the success will come and it will come however it comes and it will come in the way it comes. But that's what like makes you keep going. And like, we both want to business that we're going to be in like 10 years later, still being like, we're so content and happy, not, and that's really the goal, not a business that we're going to be in 10 years later being like, oh my God, we hit this goal, but everything about what we're doing is like unsustainable and feels like shit and da, 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 da. Mm, Totally. So good. So anyway, permission for that to be true at whatever income level you're at, by the way, like if you're below a hundred K and just feel really content and amazing. Great. If you're like, you're allowed to feel that at every level. Personally, I have, and have made that like a really high value at every level. And again, I think that's why we continued, um, yeah, continued to grow over time. So like, there's not like a, I'm allowed to feel this way because I'm at a certain point either. And I just want to say that like, you're allowed to feel that way at any point, And that's where you create sustainability. Absolutely. So good. Okay, Megan, tell them things. Cool. So I, I, go ahead. I'm so excited about this. I could just keep my pants. (laughs) Um, I think this is like the coolest thing ever. So anyway, thank you for- So I am- Uh, in the middle of creating a program that um, basically is geared toward business owners who essentially have either have someone on their team or want to hire somebody on their team, but they're not necessarily from this space. 
So I feel like, um, especially lately, I feel like um, we, like Lacey said earlier, we've hired people on our team that are friends or family members, things like that, but they didn't necessarily have, like they weren't a VA that came on or an OBM that came on. We they didn't really have a lot of like context about the online space. Really not at all. And so, yeah. and, and we really like trained them and poured into them and really like um, helped support them and give them the resources and guidance to to learn and, and really grow with the business. Um, and I feel like what happens a lot is, you know, um, especially because like we talk a lot about the importance of hiring based on um, the, the fit personality. Yeah. and personality mm-hmm. and like the qualities that you're looking for in a person rather than specific skills or qualifications or, you know, a specific certification or anything like that. And, and I think that like, especially if you're, um, wanting a long-term team member, like that, that fit and that, like, you know, building that relationship matters so much, yep. but mm-hmm. sometimes that skill set might not necessarily be there. So that is exactly what I'm creating a program for to essentially like fill that gap and to essentially help team. Like it's really geared toward team members, right. And really like geared toward helping to train them, give them the resources and the guidance to step into that role, to become really familiar with this industry, to really like feel more confident being in that support role. Um, so that, you know, they, they can start to like gain that skill set that they need. Right. Totally. Yep. And I think that, you know, what's, what's helpful about the skill set is almost like, you know, there are amazing programs. You should do Sarah's program. If you're interested in that, that train you how to, um, build a business doing this. But I think like what we've seen happen a lot is like, we've had people that like want to be part of our team that don't want to build a business. So they're in this like weird interim where they are not really wanting to build the business, but they really do want to be part of a team. I have a lot of clients that have had um, family and friends have that same experience. And so having someone that um, can bridge the gap and just help them understand how to not just be a business owner, um, which is so important and there are great things for that, but be a team member, I think is really interesting um, as well. So that is like, what's the word? I think it's, it's where so many business owners get themselves stuck because they have the person, but they don't have the time to mm-hmm. pour into them. And so that like stuck point is what this can help with, but I'm just like so excited about that because I feel like I have watched Megan do that on our team so much. Like I have, um, a family member who's part of our team, who I am so grateful to Megan for just like being such a resource for her and pouring into her so much. And it has been such a cool gift to be able to do that in my business, but I wouldn't have been able to do that if Megan hadn't been able to train her to kind of like get this space a little bit. So landing page waiting. List. Yes. So yes. if you are interested, I have a wait list open. Um, the program's in development still. So um, if you're interested in hearing more about it and getting notified when I have more info on it, it's at whitespace.team slash training. Um, and I'll drop the link below as well. So good. Thank you, Thank you Megan. Happy five years to you. I love you. I'm and so grateful to you. To you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Love you. All right. Bye guys. Mm-hmm.